Hi, this is Jess. You're watching DITV. I am here with Dottie Metcalf Lindenberger, an educator and a former astronaut with NASA. Dottie, thank you so much for being with us today. Yeah, it's a great time to be here today. I've really enjoyed meeting students and like in my two talks had a lot of really good questions. So it's been a good day. Great. Um, let's talk about the basics. What does it take to become an astronaut? What are the requirements and what's the training that you go through? Sure. So the basics is that everyone that becomes an astronaut has to have at least a bachelor's in math, engineering, or science. But of course, it's become really competitive. And so it's even better to have a master's or if you want to do a PhD or if you're um, a test pilot, some of those additional skills that you bring in. Um, and then the training is, is awesome, but it, it can be intense at times because while you're doing uh, physical training, you're also doing language training. Um, the current astronauts are learning Russian and so they have to become up to a proficiency of intermediate um, and that's pretty tough while going off and doing survival training and flight training and learning about the International Space Station so just like the engineering of it and all the systems so it can be a lot but it's really rewarding and especially because you're working with a small team um, you're all supporting each other each of you comes in with different skills and so you just are really cheerleading for each other as well. So you touched on the team component there. Here at DI, we're really proud of kind of the, the skills that we teach kids, things like perseverance, um, collaboration, creativity. Um, talk to me a little bit about how those impact your line of work and, and how you see that sort of being really powerful for these kids as they move into the workforce. Many of us have worked for a long time in our fields of study and we, we've had to overcome obstacles and stick with the material. It's not all easy, especially engineering and science and math. They can be tricky at times, but it, it's in that hard work that you do that you feel the most reward because when you finally come out on the other side, you're like, yeah, I did it. And so that's definitely the perseverance that you need. And, it, and it's the same. I mean, we have folks that have been Navy SEALs and really talented test pilots and engineers and physicists and all of us have come from these backgrounds where we've had to work really hard and then as far as collaboration well I like to think of it like not only are the small crews that we work in but we collaborate with the whole NASA team we have 10 NASA centers then we have all of our international partners so we have huge collaboration and DI does the same thing there's every everyone around the world and they're here for the global finals and uh, so and then we like each of us has different talents right and um, we bring different things to the plate and the same thing with the students here today that each of them has passions that may come across with their other teammates but it's not the exact passion and that's really important and so with all of that then we are successful. Absolutely. Um, let's talk a little bit about how you see STEM education um, and STEM careers really being kind of the future of the workforce. How important is that sort of education at a young age going to be impactful for these kids? Absolutely. So in the future and even right now, um, and a basic understanding and knowledge of STEM is just going to need to be needed for every citizen. We are voting on issues that change the way we are going to experience the future from global warming to sea level rising to where we want to explore next, the diseases that we're fighting, um, the, the machines that we're building, the better fuels, maybe going away from fuels. All of these things are going to take a, a background in STEM. And so if you, if that is your passion, we need you we want you and but just everyone needs to be fluent in it and literate in it and uh, to be a good citizen yes so these kids here they're a little bit different right and they're able to handle sort of these mental pressures that I think maybe you could speak to a little bit what sort of in your training how do you deal with a, a physical as well but also the mental pressure of a space mission how do you get ready for that and how do you deal with that Sure. So there's a lot of things that we all get concerned about, right? Like we don't want to have like fear of failure or uh, of being successful, but then how, are, how do you handle success? All these things. And so like we do have psychologists at NASA that um, teach us some of the things that we can do, but also we've come from backgrounds where we've had to handle that in the past as well. And I think just building a support team around you as well as taking the things that you're afraid of and learning how to channel that energy into a positive way. And so I was talking to the kids about that today like they were asking me if I was afraid to go fly in space. And I was like, well, definitely there was some adrenaline there and I had thought about the risk and I talked about that with my family. But also on the day of, like I didn't want to mess up. Like no one wants to do something that could 
change the mission or harm any of their crewmates. And so how do you take that adrenaline and that, that fear that's maybe coming in and put it into a positive way? And I think my background in competing in things similar to DI or being an athlete is learning how to channel that and, and put it the right direction. What do you think is the future for NASA? And you touched on it a little bit. We want these types of kids to be applying for jobs at NASA yeah. in the future. What will they be doing 10, 15, 20 years from now? Well, also I was talking to them about, like, we want to go explore. And it's looking like we may go back to the moon and explore there or uh, look at some other ways on how to eventually get us to Mars. And so I think the folks in this room will be a part of that team getting us to Mars. And that's exciting. But um, also, in, in addition, NASA has been partnering. And then we've also seen the, uh, the uprising and, and the startups of all these other companies. So we've got the SpaceX and the Orbital and Sierra Nevada and Blue Origin and all of these things that are coming into the mix. And that's really exciting, too, because that means that there will be space flight for tourists as well as for scientists and engineers. And, and that's gonna, it's going to look very different. The, the goals of both are going to be different, and that's great. Donnie, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. This has been a pleasure. Thanks for watching DITV.